Hello everyone, it's the Doom Dog. If you watch my Let's Plays, then you know that I got a 4K television over the summer. I wanted something to play 4K content on it. I weighed my options for this. Dragging my PC back and forth between the living room for gaming and the computer room for editing is not ideal at all. I do need the two monitors set up to do a lot of the work I do. I already have a PlayStation 4, so the PlayStation 4 Pro seemed a little redundant. The answer seemed obvious to me. Get an Xbox One X. So, that's what I did. Before we begin, I just want to say that everything you see in this video was recorded at 1080p. I do not have the equipment to record or edit video in 4K. I did hold a poll on my Facebook page asking if 1080p was enough for a review of a 4K console, and the majority of people said that it would be fine. If that bothers you, sorry, this is the best I can do for the time being. Now let's begin the review. Anyway, in November I picked up an Xbox One X. The Fallout 76 bundle was on sale at GameStop on Black Friday, and I took advantage of that sale to pick one up. Since then, I have spent a fair amount of time playing games and watching movies on it. Microsoft made a lot of promises about this console. They said it would deliver a true 4K gaming experience on a console, and they said that it would be able to reach 60 frames per second. Did they overhype, or does this console deliver? Let's take a closer look. On a technical level, the Xbox One X is a big leap over the original Xbox One. The original Xbox One was a custom 8-core AMD Jaguar processor running at 1.75 GHz with a custom GPU running at 1.3 teraflops and 8 GB of DDR3 RAM. The Xbox One X, on the other hand, is a custom 8-core Jaguar processor running at 2.3 GHz, a custom GPU running at 6 teraflops and 12 GB of DDR5 RAM. It's a fairly big leap over the original in every way and is currently the most powerful console on the market, even surpassing Sony's 4K machine, the PlayStation 4 Pro. Given that it's a $500 console, those specs are rather impressive, though I wonder if the Jaguar processor is holding it back at all. Beyond all that, the Xbox One X has a 4K Blu-ray player that plays standard Blu-rays and DVDs as well. The front has a power button with the Xbox logo on it, an eject button, one USB port, and a button for sending and receiving infrared. The back of the console has a standard power cable. There is no massive brick this time, thank God. It has HDMI out to the TV, and HDMI is your only video out option, as you'd expect from a 4K console. It has HDMI in as well if you wish to plug in a cable box or satellite. It has two more USB ports, an IR out port, a digital optical audio out port, and a networking port if you'd rather have hardwired network instead of Wi-Fi. The console feels very solid in your hands. The build quality of this is top notch and I would expect nothing less from something that costs $500. It's heavier than you would expect though. This is easily the heaviest console that I've ever owned. It's not something that you would necessarily expect from a console, but this is a nice solid brick to hold. Surprisingly enough, it's not that loud either. You'd think that the fan noise might be obnoxious on something like this, but it's not. For the most part, the Xbox One controller is an improvement over the Xbox 360 controller. It has the same basic layout as the 360 controller, but the start and back buttons have been replaced by menu and view buttons. That aside, the layout is basically the same. What has changed are the feel of the D-pad and the L and R buttons. They feel much better and much more solid than they ever did on the Xbox 360. It's a nice improvement over that. This controller also has a headphone jack on the bottom of it that lets you plug in a headset. The game's audio will play through the headset and you can do voice chat with a mic. As a whole, I do think this is an improvement over the Xbox 360 controller, but there is one thing that I do not like about it. 
The thumbsticks are smaller on this one than the 360 controller. I definitely notice that when I'm playing games with this thing. It's more of a minor inconvenience than anything else, but it's definitely noticeable. One thing that does baffle me, though, is that this console still uses batteries instead of uh, charging like the PS3 and PS4 controllers. Just... why? Speaking of the PlayStation 4, I do prefer the DualShock, but this is a good controller overall. When you move from high definition to 4K, you want to make sure that you have a high-speed HDMI cable. The standard package should come with one, but if you get an Xbox One X used, you might want to make sure that you do have an HDMI 2.0 cable to properly utilize 4K. It requires very fast transfer speeds to get the best picture out of it, and it can glitch out or go black if you aren't getting that. HDR is also well worth your time for the media that supports it. It really helps with the callers. Anyway, the main reason that you're going to get an Xbox One X is for gaming, right? Let's talk about some games. The first thing that people think about when choosing a console is its lineup of exclusives. The Xbox One X has a few exclusives that are worth your time to pick up and play through depending upon what kind of gamer you are. If you want something that offers a wide variety of old school games, many of which are classics, there is always Rare Replay. It comes with a lot of games spanning the company's entire career from the 80s up through the Xbox 360. There are 30 games in total here spanning a wide variety of genres. Boot this up, play something you loved from your childhood, or discover something you might not have heard of before. While it's missing major games for obvious reasons, Donkey Kong Country, or less obvious reasons, GoldenEye, there are a lot of classics on here. Boot up Battletoads and enjoy it until you get sick and tired of getting your ass kicked. Play Killer Instinct Gold and discover that it holds up quite well and is still an excellent fighter. Boot up Perfect Dark and play it with a decent frame rate and an improved look overall. It's the Xbox Live version of it, and you can now play it in 4K. You can't convince me that that isn't awesome. Play some Conker's Bad Fur Day and discover that it's just as inappropriate and as funny as you remember it being. There really is a lot to like with Rare Replay, and I imagine there is something for every type of gamer. Early on in the console's life, Microsoft managed to snag a console exclusive from Insomniac Games, who is usually known for producing exclusives for Sony. It's called Sunset Overdrive, and is cram-packed with the wit, great writing, charm, and humor that Insomniac is known for. It comes with their knack for great art design and extremely fun weapons. The platforming and level designs are great, it's over the top and does not take itself seriously at all, and it is a hell of a lot of fun when you get the hang of it. If you have an Xbox One or are planning to get one, definitely look into Sunset Overdrive. It's an overlooked gem on the console. Of course, the console has Halo. The Master Chief Collection brings together Halo, Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo 4. For an additional $5, you can add Halo 3 ODST as well. These games run at 60 frames per second, and it has received a massive update that adds Xbox One X support, allowing them all to play at native 4K 60. The games run silky smooth, and they look the best that they ever have. The real selling point of this collection, though, is Halo 2 Anniversary. Much like Halo 1 on its 10th anniversary, Halo 2 got a massive graphical facelift. The new graphics, cutscenes, and reworked music are all absolutely gorgeous, and it's probably the best looking game in the series now, as a direct result. For newcomers, this is a great way to get into this series. For longtime fans, the games have never run better. Either way, this collection is worth picking up. Having said that, it is widely believed and accepted that the lineup of exclusives on Microsoft's console is rather weak. It definitely pales in comparison to what Sony has for their system. There's a good chance that if you're looking to get an Xbox One X, you're looking to pick up some third-party games. How does this do as a third-party gaming machine? 
Well, the majority of the time, it is a leader of the pack. It usually plays games at higher resolutions with better frame rates than the PlayStation 4 Pro. There are exceptions to this rule, of course. Every now and then you get something that is better optimized for Sony's console. But the majority of games do play better on the X. Having said that, Microsoft did not promise better than PlayStation 4 Pro. They promised native 4K. Does it deliver this? Well, there are some native 4K games, but a lot of games range from dynamic 4K where the resolution changes depending upon the situation, but it does reach native 4K resolutions, to resolutions that are above 1080p but below native 4K. Saying that the console is a native 4K machine is a bit dishonest. In this case, native 4K is PR speak. It's still the most powerful console on the market. Let's take a look at some multi-platform games. When Ubisoft took a year off to reschool Assassin's Creed, it came back with a massive graphical upgrade from the previous entries in the series when they released Assassin's Creed Origins. And boy is it beautiful. This was one of the games that was used to show off what the Xbox One X could do when it was announced at E3, and it's easy to see why. This is the most impressive sand that I've ever seen in a game, and it is fitting of this setting. It is absolutely beautiful. It's dynamic 4K, it runs smoothly, and it gives you a good idea of what this console can do. I definitely don't regret this being one of the first games that I bought for my console. Doom is the best game of 2016. Fucking fight me. This game is fucking amazing and it looks and runs extremely well on the Xbox One X. It's an adaptive resolution that does reach 4K and it is damn near locked at 60 FPS with only minor drops in frame rate. You almost certainly won't even notice it. It delivers the best console experience for this game. This is an excellent way to experience one of this generation's best games. If you haven't played this game, Play it. It's fucking phenomenal. The current gen consoles got an enhanced version of Skyrim with higher resolutions and an overall better look with smoother performance from previous consoles on top of the enhanced visuals. If you have not played the DLC, this is a good way to experience that as well. It has mod support. This is a great version of the game whether you're playing it for the first time or going back and playing it again. And it will keep you busy for a long, long time. Remember when I said that there are rare games that run better on the PS4 Pro than on the Xbox One X? I doubt you will notice it, but this is one of those games. Both games run at 4K with more or less locked 30 frames per second. But the PlayStation 4 hits native 4K. On this console, it's a dynamic resolution. Instances of it dropping below 4K are rather rare, but it will happen. It's rather strange, but Digital Foundry pointed it out when they analyzed this version of it. This is still a great way to experience this game. I have to wonder why the enhanced consoles can't hit 60 FPS on a game from 2011 though. Even with the visual enhancements, you'd think it would be able to pull that off. Far Cry 4 is one of the games from this generation's early days. This was early enough that it was on both 7th gen and current gen as well. The Xbox One version gives you a nice boost to both visuals and performance. It runs at a locked 30 and it looks gorgeous on this console. This game is definitely a lot of fun to play with large open worlds that will keep you busy for some time with plenty of action and enemies to kill. The gunplay is just as good as it was in Far Cry 3. If you liked that one, you almost certainly will like this one as well. It's important to note that not every game is enhanced for the Xbox One X. Nowadays, games will either get released with Xbox One X support straight out of the gate, or devs can patch it into one of their older games. If a game is not patched to take advantage of the X, however, it will still run just fine on the console. Far Cry 4, for example, is not an Xbox One X enhanced title. In such a case, the console will simply upscale the visuals to 4K, giving you a cleaner image regardless. How does this do as a backwards compatible machine, though? The Xbox 360 was backwards compatible with the original Xbox games, but it was not great. There were a lot of issues, such as frame rate problems and ghosting. 
It was bad enough that I just keep an original Xbox for playing original Xbox games. The great news is that the issues from the 360 are not present on the Xbox One. Backwards compatibility on this system is absolutely great. Some games do receive Xbox One X enhanced support for things such as cleaner visuals and a native 4K resolution. Even the ones that don't get such enhancements will look and play better on the X. Backwards compatibility will get you 16x anisotropic filtering, forced V-Sync, and enhanced frame rate. The original Xbox and Xbox 360 games look and play better than they ever have on the Xbox One X. It's fucking awesome. Not every game for those consoles works, though, so make sure you look through the list of backwards compatible games to find out what of your old games will work on this console. Let's take a look at a few games and see how they run and look on original hardware versus how they run and look on the Xbox One X. Assassin's Creed is one of the Xbox One X enhanced titles. These titles receive extra work to them to utilize X hardware. This can manifest in a variety of ways such as enhanced visuals or HDR implementation. Assassin's Creed visuals are smoothed over from the original Xbox 360 version. And it runs better as well. It's a better looking and smoother playing experience on X hardware. If you look at items off in the distance especially, you will see that a lot of the jagged edges present on the 360 are largely absent on X, creating a more beautiful game overall. Mass Effect is one of the more standard backwards compatible titles. It did not receive enhanced X support, so it is a simple upscale. It comes with the standard benefits that that includes and nothing more. The biggest difference you will notice with these backwards compatible titles is how well they run. They pretty much all have better frame rates on X across the board and it definitely makes the games feel smoother and it improves playability. You will notice less of a graphical upgrade though. It's still a treat to play these older titles in 4K. The Xbox One is backwards compatible with a list of original Xbox games as well. Unfortunately, this list is much shorter, but you can tell that a lot of love and care went into improving these original Xbox titles. Here's the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. This is the Game of the Year edition with the expansion packs, and it is an absolutely stunning upgrade. The frame rate is much better, the load times are much shorter, and the image quality overall is much sharper than it was on the original Xbox. It's a much cleaner looking and much smoother playing game on X hardware. While Morrowind seems to be the most improved original Xbox games, they all seem to look and play much better in 4K on the X. The backwards compatibility and improvements over Xbox 360 and original Xbox are the system's most impressive feature. Beyond that, the Xbox One X has a variety of features. It has the Microsoft Store where you can purchase movies, games, DLC, and a variety of other things. It has a YouTube app where you can get to watch YouTube content up to and including 4K. You can use the X to stream, though you're limited to Mixer and Twitch. It has a bunch of apps that you can download to expand your use of this system, including but not limited to Hulu and Netflix. You can record clips of gameplay onto the hard drive or the thumbstick, and you can take screenshots and share them to Twitter. There's a lot of functionality packed into this system. Does the Xbox One X deliver the true 4K experience that Microsoft promised? Well, no. It doesn't quite reach that goal. There's quite a few games that do reach 4K or dynamic 4K, but there's quite a few games that don't as well. Having said that, I am rather impressed with this hardware. It's a great Blu-ray player and 4K player. And more often than not, games look and run better on it than they do on the PS4 Pro or the base console. The backwards compatibility feature is the feature that impresses me the most. Your old games look stunning presented in 4K. For a console, this is a very nice piece of tech. 
Having said that, $500 is a fair chunk of change for a console. Is it worth it? Well, if you have a 4K TV and want a good 4K player and gaming machine for your living room, it is absolutely worth it. If you're still rocking an old 1080p TV, however, I would say it's not. I don't think it's a big enough upgrade from 1080p to warrant the price. In this case, I'd recommend getting a PlayStation 4. As someone that does have a 4K TV though, I am more than pleased with my purchase. I definitely do not regret picking up this console. Thanks everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you could share this video, that would help me out a lot. Talk to you later everybody. Doomdog out. <laughs>